This is a proof of the Sicari Legendre theorem. The Sicari Legendre theorem was not actually a result included in Euclid's elements. It was proven much later by Sicari and Legendre. Many mathematicians hope to show that Euclid's fifth axiom, which is very different in character from the other four, they hope to show that this fifth axiom could be proven from the other four. And so the set of results which you can prove just assuming the first four axioms from Euclid's elements, these collections of results are called neutral geometry. So in particular, one thing they were able to prove was that the sum of the angles of a triangle is less than or equal to 180 degrees. In order to prove the sum of angles of a triangle is 180 degrees requires the use of the parallel postulate. So for simplicity's sake, first we'll make the following definition. Given a triangle, ABC, we're going to define the angle sum, we'll call that sigma of ABC, to be the sum of the angles at A, B, and C in this triangle. And so with this notation, we can state the sicari legendre theorem as for any triangle, the angle sum of that triangle ABC is less than or equal to 180 degrees, or as Euclid would have said, two right angles. This proof is rather long. It's divided into four steps. So let's begin. The first step says, given any triangle ABC, the sum of any two angles is less than 180 degrees. So here's our triangle ABC, and let's consider the angles alpha and beta. Now let's extend the side AB to another point D, and let's mark this exterior angle at vertex B. Let's call that delta. Now by Euclid's proposition 13, the linear pair theorem, we know that angle beta plus angle delta is equal to 180 degrees. And by Euclid's proposition 16, the exterior angle theorem, we know that angle at alpha is less than the angle at delta. Now we just do a little bit of math. We can add the same quantity to both sides of this inequality. So alpha plus beta is less than delta plus beta. But delta plus beta, by the linear pair theorem, we know that's 180 degrees. So we substitute that quantity in. And we have alpha plus beta is less than 180 degrees, which is what we wanted to prove any two angles in a triangle is less than 180 degrees. Now this step will come in handy later. We'll actually form a contradiction using this step. In the next part of this proof, we'll show that given any triangle, ABC, we want to relate the angle sum of this triangle to the angle sum of two triangles which constitute this triangle. In other words, if we create another point D, on the side AB, that will naturally split the triangle ABC into two smaller triangles, ADC and triangle BDC. How are the angle sums of all these triangles related? Well, this step says that the angle sum of triangle ABC, if we add two right angles, if we add 180 degrees to that, we will obtain the angle sum of the two smaller triangles, the angle sum of ADC plus the angle sum of BDC. And the proof of this is just strictly algebra. If we label all the angles, the angles of ADC as alpha, delta 1, and theta 1, and the angles of BDC as beta, delta 2, and theta 2, we can write the two angle sums on the right as follows. And by rearranging delta 1 and delta 2, by Euclid's Proposition 13, the Linear Pair Theorem, we know those two angles add up to 180 degrees, and the remaining angles form the angle sum of triangle ABC. And this completes the proof of Step 2 of the sicari legendre Theorem. Step 3 is a little bit more complicated. Step 3 says that given a triangle, ABC, we're able to construct a second triangle with the following properties. The second triangle will have the same angle sum as the original triangle, and furthermore, one of the angles will be less than or equal to half the size of a given angle of the first triangle. Visually, this says that if we have the triangle ABC and angle A, we'll mark that with lowercase a, given that triangle, we can create another triangle XYZ such that 
the angle sum of xyz is equal to the angle sum of abc, and furthermore, this angle x is less than or equal to half the angle vertex A. To begin this proof, consider the triangle ABC, and we'll do a little bit of a construction. Create the midpoint M of the side BC. Once you mark the midpoint, this divides BC into two congruent sides, BM and MC. Then draw a line from A to M, and then extend this line, AM, to another point D, such that AM and MD have the same length. We know we can do this by Euclid's Proposition 3, length transfer. Furthermore, we have these two vertical angles by Euclid's Proposition 15. We know that all vertical angles are equal. So therefore, we have a lot of congruent parts, and we actually have two congruent triangles. Triangle AMC is congruent to triangle DMB by side angle side, Euclid's Proposition 4. And so, since corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we know these two angles are the same, and these two angles are the same. So these two congruent triangles have the same angle sum. Furthermore, by step 2, we know that the angle sum of this large triangle ABC plus 180 degrees is equal to the angle sums of these two smaller triangles that constitute it. The angle sum of ABC is related to the angle sum of AMC and AMB. Furthermore, we've already proven that the angle sum of AMC is equal to the angle sum of DMB, so I could replace the angle sum of AMC with the angle sum of DMB, and the angle sum of AMB is equal to itself. Therefore, again by using some algebra, this proves that the angle sum of triangle ABC is equal to the angle sum of triangle ABD. And so this gives us the first part of what we're trying to prove. Recall, given a triangle, we're trying to construct a second triangle with the same angle sum, and also we want to have one angle less than or equal to half the angle of one of the original angles in the original triangle. So we have our second triangle. Now to prove that one of those angles is less than or equal to half the original angle, consider the original angle at A. This original angle is composed of these two smaller angles, which we've labeled as alpha and omega. Now, since this angle at A is equal to alpha plus omega, one of those two angles must be less than or equal to half the angle at A. To see why, we can do a proof by contradiction. If both alpha and omega were greater than half the angle at A, their sum would be greater than the angle at A. This is impossible, so one of the angles must be less than or equal to half the angle at A. So one of these two angles is less than or equal to half the angle at A, and both of these angles represent an angle of this new triangle, A, B, D, because angle alpha is congruent to this angle alpha, which is also an angle of ADB, an angle omega, is one of the angles of ADB. Therefore, this new triangle has to have an angle which is less than or equal to half the angle at vertex A. Finally, we move on to step four, the final step in the proof of the saccharie legendre theorem. Recall, what we really want to prove, our ultimate goal, is that given a triangle ABC, the angle sum of that triangle is less than or equal to 180 degrees. To prove this, we're going to use a proof by contradiction. Let's assume instead that the angle sum of triangle ABC is greater than 180 degrees. We'll derive a contradiction. So if this angle sum is greater than 180 degrees, well, there must be some number epsilon such that the angle sum is equal to 180 plus epsilon. 
epsilon represents the excess of 180 degrees. The next fact we need is incredibly subtle, something called the Archimedean property of real numbers. And this states the following. For any small number, there exists some constant that you can multiply by so that it will exceed any fixed number. So in our case, the angle at A is fixed. In epsilon, you can think of as a small number. There exists some large number. In this case, we'll choose a large enough power of 2. There exists some power of 2, such that when you multiply it by epsilon, it will be larger than the angle at A. This is due to the Archimedean property of real numbers, which is often added as an additional axiom in later treatments of geometry. So what we'll do is according to that number n, the power of 2 that we need, we're going to apply step 3 a total of n times, which will produce n new triangles from our original triangle ABC. So we're given the triangle ABC, the angle at A, we'll label that as lowercase a. From step 3, we create a new triangle with the same angle sum, and this angle, A1, is less than or equal to half the angle at A. Repeat, given this triangle, we produce a new triangle with the same angle sum, and this angle, A2, is less than or equal to half the angle at A1. Now we can combine these two facts to show that angle A2 is less than or equal to 1 fourth, or 1 over 2 squared, the angle A. Now from this second new triangle, we'll produce a third new triangle with angle A3. And angle A3 is less than or equal to half the angle at A2. Again, this triangle has the same angle sum. And combining this new inequality with a previous inequality, we can see that the angle at A3 is less than or equal to 1 eighth or 1 over 2 cubed, times the original angle A. Repeating this a total of n times, we have a new triangle. We'll call this one PQR. This angle at P, we'll call that AN. That angle will be less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the n times the angle at A. And this triangle, PQR, has the same angle sum as triangle ABC. So the triangle ABC had angle sum 180 plus epsilon. Therefore, the angle sum of PQR is the same quantity. But we could also write the angle sum of triangle PQR in terms of these angles, a sub n plus q plus r. Now remember, we chose this number n so that 2 to the n times epsilon was greater than the angle at a. A little bit of algebra shows us that 1 divided by 2 to the n times a is less than epsilon. But then, by the transitive property, a sub n is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the n times a. 1 over 2 to the n times a is less than epsilon. Therefore, this new angle, a sub n, is less than epsilon. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, a sub n is less than epsilon. Add 180 to both sides of this then you have a sub n plus 180 is less than epsilon plus 180. But that's the angle sum of PQR. Therefore, it's equal to a sub n plus q plus r. So take the left side and the right side here and put them together. Subtract a sub n from both sides. You'll have 180 is less than q plus r. In step 1, we proved that the sum of any two angles is less than 180, not greater than 180. This contradicts step 1. Therefore, our original assumption that the angle sum of triangle ABC is greater than 180 degrees is false. Well, if the angle sum is not greater than 180 degrees, then it must be less than or equal to 180 degrees. And this completes the proof of the Sakari-Legendre theorem.